This video is one of the next series of um, containers. In this video I'll talk about for each loop uh, SMO animator. SMO is, stands for um, SQL Server Management Object and Reservat SQL Server MVP Author and Trainer. Uh, uh, SMO animator provides ability to loops through um, .NET libraries for managing SQL Server objects. This not that, this .NET li libraries uh, and, uh, are famous with SMO name, which stands for SQL Server Management Object. Examples of this is looping through uh, SQL Server logins, jobs, uh, tables of specific database, indexes, views. Uh, some parts of this information are same as what you will gain from ADO.NET uh, Schema Row Set Animator, but some part of this uh, are kind of information that can be uh, fetched easier here, like uh, fetching link server, that sort of thing. Uh, you actually can uh, fetch link server information from information schema through ADO.NET schema row set as well, but this is just another way to do that. And sometimes this uh, method is easier than the other one. Sometimes the other one is easier. Uh, for this sample, I, uh, uh, provide this scenario, we have two database server for customer information. For example, one database is for North Island, another is for South Island. Uh, we have two link server created to connect for each of these uh, ser uh, servers. And we want a loop structure to loop through uh, all link server. Uh, for now, these are two, but for example, if uh, any future link server added in, uh, adds in uh, future, with same structure with customer information, we want to have that one in the loop structure as well. So we want uh, a loop structure to be dynamic and load customer data, which is customer data is uh, static uh, metadata. We want to load that information into an integrated database. So for that sample, we have two servers, which we can connect to those two servers through linked server. This is uh, um, our destination server. In this destination server, in server objects, in linked server, we have two linked server. Each of these linked server connected to a, a database set. For example, for this one, we have a database customers and under customers, there's a customer info table, which have some customer information. And then we have same for South Island customers. And we want to load those information into a database named DW. In the DW, we have a dim customer table, which is empty right now. Oh, sorry, it's full. So I just truncate this table, truncate table dim customer. Okay, now it's empty. It has same customer information, just with two additional columns, server name and load date time. We want to mm, add those information here and check uh, and also enter server name and load date time as well. By server name, we mean actually the linked server name. Okay, so what we are going to do is to create a new SSI project. This is a new SSI project with an empty package. I create a for each loop container here. I named this as, I renamed this as loop through linked servers. And I create an variable named linked server. I set data type of this as a string. We want to load linked server name in this string variable. Then I double click on this and in the collection tab, here I can use the for each SMO enumerator. SMO provides information of the data source uh, of a SQL Server data. This only works with SQL Server data source. I should create a connection to that SQL Server. As you can see, this is SMO connection manager editor, which is quite different with OLEDB connection or ADO.NET connection.
I test connection and then in enumerate after setting up the connection in the enumerate I click the browse and here you can see that this uh, enumeration can pick this kind of information it can pick linked server it can pick jobs logins or I can go under the databases I can get list of all databases or file groups data file log files this are this information are very good for for case of administration if you want to do uh, administration from a SSS package this is good stru loop structure for doing this kind of information and you can fetch this information as objects or as urns which are another uh, kind of uh, object in uh, SMO objects. These two objects can be used in a script task uh, after loading this information then you can access those script tasks with SMO uh, namespaces or you can just pick names and then using some scripts, tsql scripts or that sort of thing with names. For this case uh, we want to just loop through linked server under this instance and just pick the names. So I just do this Okay, after doing that, you can see that the enumerate uh, string will be entered here. You can change this enumerate string as well. Then I go to variable mapping. I want to load the result into the linked server variable. So I choose linked server variable and this will be loaded there. If I, if here I choose objects or UR and this will return uh, an object type and then here in variable mapping I should choose an object type variable but for a uh, name this always will be, will be a string so I can use a string here. So this is uh, the looping structure now I want to create the data flow here to move data from each link server into the uh, integrated database. Uh, before doing that I want to create the SQL command for selecting information from the source so I create a SQL command variable of string type. I can generate the SQL command. When we work with uh, linked server, we can access to information from linked server with a sample select command with just linked server name, database name, schema name, and table name is customer info. As you can see this provide information. So I want to create this information, this uh, select uh, command dynamically based on the name of uh, linked server. So I copy that. For doing that I can put an expression task. Another way to do that is to click on this, go to properties window and then set evaluate as expression for this property to true. This means that the value of this, this expression, this uh, SQL command variable will be resolved by expression. And then I set the expression here. Okay, the expression can be based on this and I want this part to be fetched from the variable that we fetched in each iteration of the for each loop. So I use linked server variable here. So as you can see it's already empty because we don't have any value there. So this is the expression that we built here. I hit OK and then I put the data flow task here. I named this as import data into, into integrated database. Into this data flow task I create an OLEDB sorry an OLDB source first. In the OLEDB source I create a <coughs> new connection to our source database which is integrated 
data warehouse, we do not need to connect to each of those servers because linked server provide information uh, from the other servers. And here we want to, ch we can choose actually SQL command from variable, which is that one variable. But because the variable is not a valid variable, this will not provide a valid result for us. For getting the valid information, I need to have a valid linked server name here. So for just setting up this package, I set a value here, but this value will be resolved dynamically. With that change, actually, when I go to SQL command and choose this, you can see that this resolved again, and now I can see the result. This will cause that column structure will be uh, column structure be fetched. Now, after loading, after fetching this information, we want to first check is this information exist in the destination or not. So we can use a lookup. I put a lookup here, and in this lookup, I want to look this through dim customer table in the destination and I want to check this based on the customer key so this means that this will join the incoming rows with the exist with the reference table based on the incoming key uh, by default lookup transform will fail if there is uh, no match entry by but I want no match entries because I want those to those just those records to be entered into the destination table, so I redirect rows to no no match output. Then after that, I use a derived column. Derived column is because I want to add two new columns, which is load date time and also link server name. So I connect the no match output because I just want new records in the derived column. I create two new columns. The first one is the date time, load date time, and the second one is server name. For the server name, I use the variable linked server here because this always will be resolved based on the current value of this and the current value is length of 22, it might be, we might find some um, new linked server with uh, length more than that. It's better to set up the length for this directly here. So I put a typecast here to WSTR with length of 50. This means that this column will be in length of 50. So I created these two columns and finally I want to load them into the destination. So I put OLEDB destination here and I load the result into this. Destination is same database and them customers. You can see that there is nothing here right now and the mappings all columns mapped because names are equal. So this is the structure of or loop before checking that I just select everything from this and you can see that this table is already empty I execute this and this will loops through link server, the first link server insert, and then the second one. Uh, the reason of this was fast because in each link server we just had around 10,000 records. So when I execute this, you can see that all records inserted. We have 80,000 records here. Some of records comes from server name North Island customers with this load time. Some of them coming from South Island customers this load time and this is because we have these two link server if any other link server 
will, uh, will be added in the future. This loop structure does not need to be changed or any change to code. Just uh, this uh, dynamic structure will pick changes and those changes will be detected and the package will be run in a nice way. Okay, so consideration uh, in uh, with SMO with SQL Server management objects um, loop structure and numerator, you can loop through SQL Server objects, which uh, might be easier from information schema. Sometimes information schema are easier, sometimes this is easier. So this is only works with SQL Server, but this is uh, another way of accessing to metadata of SQL Server. And the other things about that is that you can load information, uh, get uh, objects and use that object in a script task.